So the time has finally come, the end of the Survivor Profile series. At the beginning of each of my videos, I always started with a jab at a certain character and the reactions were mixed. But after two months and two delays, I can finally say I'm doing the Survivor Profile everyone has been waiting for. The one Survivor with a sexy voice and nice body, I, Zackass, am proud to announce that this week we are covering the illustrious, bombastic, kind-hearted character known across the waters of the southern USA. This week, we are doing Survivor Profile. Virgil the Talking Boat! Lol. Now, out of all the survivors that both groups have encountered, only one person really stood out and actually survived or stood a chance of surviving for an extended period of time. Before we get into Virgil, let's get into the honorable mentions of all the other survivors the main characters have encountered and gotten killed across both games. Now, starting off, the News Chopper 5 helicopter pilot of No Mercy into Crash Course, having a similar fate to the same one of the ending of a regular pilot in Dark Carnival, really didn't have much to talk about except their expertise in manning flying equipment and driving under the influence of the green flu. Maybe the two are related? Maybe they both identify as attack helicopters? Who knows because they died so damn quick! This is why we need cinematics between the campaigns so we can explain some of this shit. Moving on to Death Toll. Better safe than sorry. Everyone's favorite. Better safe than sorry. Christian, commonly referred to as the Better safe than sorry. Church guy. The reason he is so Better safe than sorry. Paranoid is due to a closed survivor to him claiming he was immune until turning and biting the church guy. No, 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 no. You said that last time. You said that last time. I trusted you last time. I opened the door before. And I I got bit from my trouble. I'm better safe than sorry. The church guy grew wary of any and all surviving people, and after better safe than sorry, an hour of not turning, assumed he himself was immune and boarded himself up in the better safe than sorry church. It's been an hour. It's been an hour. Late. Must be immune. That's right. It must be immune. No, I have to. I have to be immune. Better safe than sorry. He assumes they are going to infect him and calls for the hordes of the infected by chiming the loud ass church bell. Better safe than sorry. After the group takes out the horde, they open the door to find church guy was not better safe than sorry. And will have either become a boomer, smoker, or hunter. There is no chance of him becoming a spitter, jockey, or charger, even in Left 4 Dead 2's port of the campaign. Upon entering the church, better safe than sorry will be scribbled everywhere on the church walls, showing how bad his trust issues were, much like the women that I've tried to date in my life. <laughs> uh... Better safe than sorry, better safe than sorry, better safe than sorry, better safe than sorry. Better... At the end of Death Toll, the boat owners John and Amanda Slater, well, we don't get much context on what happened with them after the events of Death Toll leading up to Dead Air, but in the comic, the survivors reference them kicking them off the boat and taking their weapons to stay alive as a hustle, or maybe the couple learned they may be carriers and kicked them off. We really don't know since Valve won't give us anything connecting the campaigns, like Crash Course to explain the gaps between them, even and even then, Crash Course doesn't explain how they got to Death Toll. Did that big ass armored Dawn of the Dead vehicle break down? Who the hell knows? Speaking of big ass loopholes, what the hell happened between Dead Air and Blood Harvest? To the airplane pilot, did he have the same fate as the other two aircraft pilots? Did his plane crash? Did they parachute out after a mutiny? Who the hell knows? <laughs> In Blood Harvest, we get Rescue 9, a team of military agents that come and pick up the original survivors and take them back to their military base in hopes of finding a cure to the infection. The following events are very detailed and can be discovered by reading the Sacrifice comic online for free, which if you want me to do a read of the comics on a video, let me know. Moving on to the second group of survivors in their honorable interactions list, I know I said Virgil at the start, but bear with me. The Gunstone owner Whitaker is a pain in the ass to say the least. He has walled himself off from the world with tons of ammo and provisions and refuses to let any else in but isn't stingy enough not to make an even trade. He bargains with them to get him some good old fashioned cola in exchange for blowing up the stalled 18 wheeler. Oni NG perfectly summed up how a sane person would have interacted with the weapons purveyor. 
What'd he say? He says he wants some good old-fashioned cola. What? Why? He gonna blow up the truck and clear the way! I would've just suggested walking around it, but whatever. Okay. Guys, we're walking around it! Whitaker most likely uses a rocket launcher to destroy the tanker, considering grenade launchers don't have that sound effect or firepower. The model for Whitaker was later reused as the basis for the fallen survivor, Uncommon Infected, in the passing, who also drops a lot of provisions upon his death as well. Skipping the helicopter pilot in Dark Carnival, we finally approach the best NPC in Left 4 Dead history, Virgil the Talking Boat. Chiming in with a Cajun accent, Virgil first meets the survivors via radio communication at the end of Swamp Fever. After stalling for a while, Virgil will sneeze a rocket through the giant fence of the plantation so the survivors can escape the horde of endless infected. Virgil welcomes them aboard himself. Now the whole focus of the Hard Rain campaign is to get more gas for Virgil so he doesn't remain thirsty. The survivors forget their weapons and flares in a gun bag in Virgil's stomach, so they had to light the burger take sign because not only was Virgil thirsty, but he was hungry. Virgil takes them into his welcoming arms and finally guides them to their final destination, a port in Nolens, so they can escape with the military. And then they have to bid farewell to one of their greatest friends of all time. Now a few trivia facts on Virgil, he has a tramp stamp that says Lagniape, a French word for giving or gift, because Virgil is a gift to all of us. Now I probably pronounced that word incorrectly, and I know I'll have more than a few people complaining about that. I didn't research it, and I didn't care to. I just felt like saying Lagniape. Now we also see that Virgil had a wife, but the green flu took her life. So sadly, they won't spend the rest rest of their lives floating around living as a boat couple with little boat babies floating around everywhere. Now why might you ask am I calling Virgil a talking boat? Memes. The whole boat meme is actually a joke on the steam forums that states that Virgil is a talking boat. This theory is substantiated by Chet Falasek who stated that Virgil is not a man when someone asked why Virgil existed during the last man on earth mutations. So I'm sticking with the fact that he is a sentient boat since there is no character model for Virgil ever seen either. Another quick side note is that Virgil is the only survivor to survive traveling with a playable group of survivors. Virgil is eternal, let's hope he didn't end up shipwrecked after the events of Left 4 Dead 2. Other honorable mentions for NPC survivors go to Popagator and Rescue 7, who got the Left 4 Dead 2 survivors to freedom and have left us hanging on the Left 4 Dead 3 for 8 years. But that will all change once Left 4 Dead 3 comes out on February 29th, 2018. Left 4 Dead 3 confirmed. And so, for those of you who have watched this on its day one release, you are here to see the survivor profile for Rochelle. I made it the thumbnail and the title, and you stuck around long enough to not dislike or berate me entirely in the comment section. Don't worry, this was pretty much a happy Halloween full video, so happy Halloween to you, and Rochelle will be out this Friday as the last episode of the Survivor Profile series. So stay tuned for the series finale of Survivor Profiles, and to those who kept saying Keith, he was never actually seen in the series, so I will include him in his own video someday, maybe, if you want that. Although I have plenty of fans that type out Ellis' Keith fanfics all the time in my comments and in my stream chat. Oh Zach, you forgot about the Midnight Riders, they're survivors too. Remember the bus and the passing? Oh, that's right. Thank you, BG. Although they only appear occasionally on the second chapter of The Passing, which, by the way, BG Bean will be joining me as a guest host for Survivor Profile Rochelle coming out Friday. Lemon cakes are awesome! Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more. And until next time, stay... Wow.